I'm getting ready to do a canning video and I just want to put a disclaimer out there that I'm no expert canner. This is actually only the second time I've canned other than canning maple syrup. But uh, really I just want to show the process, the whole process of canning and all of everything that goes into it. For anyone out there who is considering doing this, because I think there's a lot of people out there that would like to do this but maybe they're afraid to do it or maybe they don't quite know the details of it. So I just want to show the details of the canning process and hopefully that will uh, take away some of the questions that people have and uh, maybe eliminate some of the fear and hopefully get more people into doing this because I think it's a great way of preserving the food that you get from your garden. It doesn't require any refrigeration and uh, technically it doesn't even require electricity to do it. You could actually do canning right over a wood fire if you wanted to. So we'll go ahead and get started. Hey everybody. Getting ready to harvest some pickling cucumbers and I'm going to take them home and pickle them. Figure I'll take you along for the ride. When I harvest these cucumbers, I always leave about a quarter inch of stem and I come around to the flower end and trim off about a sixteenth of an inch to get rid of that flower. There's enzymes in there and that'll let your cucumber continue to mature and it'll get soft on you if you don't cut that off. Okay, so I brought it out to the shed because we don't want the heat and steam in the house. I got everything set up, so we'll go ahead and weigh these cucumbers up. Alright, I already washed my cucumbers and I trimmed off the flower end and I trimmed off the stem end as well. And uh, you just need to get two pounds of cucumbers. I put this uh, plastic bowl on here and then I zeroed out the scale. If you're concerned your scale isn't accurate, all you need to do is sit a gallon of water on it and it should weigh 8.8 .8 pounds. I think everybody has a gallon of water or has the ability to get one. That looks like two pounds to me, actually. There we go. You want to get the weight right because the vinegar and sugar and everything you add is all based on the weight or volume of the food you're preserving. Alright, next thing you need to do is uh, cut your cucumbers into spears lengthwise. Cut them in half. them in half again. Now for these little bitty ones you could probably just cut them in half or possibly even leave them whole but I'm sticking to the recipe and the recipe says to uh, cut them in spears. So that's what I'm going to do. A couple things you're going to need and you should have this stuff ready before you get started. Um, I moved everything out to the shed so I'm kind of disorganized but you need a pot to boil water in. You need another pot to let the cucumbers stand in with uh, boiling water. And you'll need a glass bowl to put your sliced cucumbers in. And it's nice to have a strainer to drain your cucumbers. So before you slice the cucumbers up, it's a good idea to get some water boiling enough to cover these cucumbers. 
and while you're waiting for the water to boil, you can uh, eat the leftover cucumbers. Okay, water's boiling, so we'll turn that off. Put your sliced pickles into a pot. Try to level them out. Good pot holder. When you take these lids off, it's nice to kind of turn them away from you so you don't get blasted with steam. And just put enough water, boiling water, on these cucumbers to cover them. Good. I will just let that stand for two hours. Alright, so about 10-15 minutes before your pickles are done soaking in that hot water, you're going to want to turn on your uh, canner. And I'm not going to show you this, but you basically you just put the jars and your lids in the canner and cover them with an inch or two of water. And you just want to let that simmer. Once you start seeing little bubbles forming on everything inside the canner, that's when it's simmering. 180 degrees, 180 if you want to get particular. You don't want to boil them or your lids can fail. And the next thing we need to do is get our other ingredients prepared, our liquid. And what we need is two cups of sugar. I'm making a, a half batch, so I'm just splitting all the ingredients right down the middle. We're going to need to bring that to a boil once we add our other ingredients. And we need just under two cups of vinegar. And it's a good idea to put just a little bit of vinegar in your canner as well. And that will keep your uh, jars from getting that white film on them. Pour that right in with the sugar. Need one and a half tablespoons of canning salt or kosher salt will work. Two teaspoons of celery seed. And we need uh, two teaspoons of turmeric. And finally we need uh, three quarters of a teaspoon of mustard seed. Now we're going to want to bring that to a boil and we'll be ready to start canning. Okay, so the two hours has been up. Now we need to drain our pickles, our cucumbers. Pour them into a colander over another pot. Let those cucumbers drain really well and just keep an eye on this vinegar and sugar mixture and spices. Make sure it doesn't burn. You just need it to be boiling. Alright, we're ready. The syrup mixture is boiling. Pots or our can jars are heated up. Take out one of the jars.
Pack those spears into the jars best you can. This is the first time I've done this recipe, so kind of a bit tricky. Looks like you've got bubbles in there you want to try and go through but with these spears there's really not going to be many bubbles if any the liquid goes right down in And you want to fill it with that hot liquid and leave a quarter inch head space, which you can use this or you can go by the, the top thread band on the jar. You need to wipe off the rim of the jar so that it'll get a good seal. Especially if you're clumsy like me and get it everywhere. Now I'll grab a lid. Center the lid. And when you put the ring on, you just want to go finger tight. That's it. Place that jar back in the canner and grab another one. Keep that process till you get them all filled up. All right, that's it. They're all packed away in the canner. Six half pints. And uh, you just want to keep an inch or two water over the top of them. And uh, don't have them touching one another. So we'll go ahead and put the lid on. And uh, wait for that to come to a boil. Keep an eye on it, and as soon as it starts boiling, that's when you start your timer and you process them for 10 minutes. In case you can't tell, it's hot. It's probably uh, over 100 degrees today, and it's real humid. And being cramped up in that shed with that cooker going makes it that much hotter. But it'll be worth it. And, uh, yesterday I canned some squash pickles. These are yellow summer squash crooknecks and they taste really good kind of a sweet pickle good way to use up your summer squash i know I tend to get a lot of them you know if you're outside doing this it's nice to keep an extra pot of water on hand for washing or whatever you may need and also uh, because I'm in the shed it's in a closed space I'm keeping that cooker a good two to three feet away from everything but also got a fire extinguisher on hand near the exit in case something goes wrong All right, I think it's just about ready to roll and boil That looks like a rolling boil to me. It's not a raging boil, but it's rolling. If anybody knows for sure, I'd like to hear it, but go ahead and start my timer. Let those boil for 10 minutes and they'll be done. All right, they're done, but you know what? I'm still not 100% sure if that was a rolling boil. Um, so I'm gonna let it go an extra minute because that's when it really started boiling real rapid uh, just to be sure if you go over the time um, it's not gonna cause any problems other than your pickles might end up being a little soft or something but if you go under the amount of time you may end up with spoiled food so I'd rather go a little bit longer and you know better be safe than sorry 
and uh, if you're over a thousand foot above sea level you also need to increase the time as well but where we're at we're at about 985 feet so uh, 10 minutes is spot on turn off the heat take the lid off the canner And let it sit for five minutes before you remove the jars. It's been five minutes. These have been sitting in the hot water, sort of slightly cooling off. Just reach in there, pull them out, and sit them on a dry towel. If the towel is wet, you might break your jars. And uh, space the jars about one inch apart. One to two inches apart. You can hear those lids popping almost as soon as I pull them out of the hot water. Same thing happened yesterday when I canned the uh, squash pickles. But that doesn't mean they're finished. You want to let these sit in a place where they're not going to get any cold drafts because any rapid change in temperature to those jars can cause them to break. That's it. Those will sit there for until morning. 12 to 24 hours and then I'll check the seals. Now I don't need to sit here and wait 24 hours to show you how to check the seals because I made some squash pickles yesterday. You're gonna notice that the band is really loose. Don't remove the band on those ones until they've sat for 12 to 24 hours. Just pretend that this is 12 to 24 hours later. The band will be loose, we'll remove it press down on the top to make sure that that button or seal in the middle is down it is and then gently lift on the ring and if you can lift it like that without the seal popping off then you've made a good vacuum and that is sealed and ready to preserve they say these will last for one year you just heard one pop but uh, I know people that have had canned food that has lasted for a lot longer than one year. But what you want to do with all your cans is label them once they're finished. This is squash pickles. And it was canned on 7-3-2012. Now you can get fancy labels for the jars or a piece of tape or whatever, but I just write on the lid. That's it. That's how you pickle. That's one way to pickle. There's a whole bunch of ways of doing it. But like I said, if you just get a good recipe book, you can read the recipes and try whatever method you want. Well, in case you can't tell, I'm pretty new to canning. I canned a lot of maple syrup, but that's a bit different. And uh, But even though I'm new to canning, the process is easy as long as you follow the instructions. And uh, all you really need to do is get a good book on canning and preserving. Um, I'd recommend the Ball Blue Book of Preserving. It has a lot of a wide variety of recipes from pickling to uh, cold pack, hot pack, canning meat, canning fish. Um, it even goes into freezing and dehydrating food as well. So it's a 
it's a very inexpensive book it's straight to the point it tells you all the basics and it can get you going and from there you know it's just up to you to experiment and come up with uh, new recipes but uh, I'm just standing outside here in the shade of this uh, spruce tree relaxing until those cans are ready to pull out of the canner anyway I hope this is a uh, helpful uh, for me it's fun, it's something fun to do, and it's a way to preserve the food that I get from my garden. You know, I put a lot of hard work into that garden, and uh, I don't want to see that food go to waste. The food comes in in abundance, and then it's gone, so if you don't can it or preserve it in some way, it's just going to rot or uh, get soft and go bad in your refrigerator or on your shelf. So, if you're going to have a garden, it's almost... Uh, requirement that you learn how to can as well or preserve the food in some manner and for me um, I can freeze the food and I do plan on freezing a lot of food I have a five cubic foot chest freezer which is small but it's enough to can quite a bit of stuff or to uh, freeze and put away quite a bit of stuff but I don't want to rely hundred percent on that freezer that's why I have a dehydrator so I can dry food and now I'm also canning food so I have three different ways of preserving food in case something goes wrong I'll have food no matter what so thanks for watching and uh, thanks for all the comments and support hope you guys like this video talk to you later